Okay, you're able to see? Yes. Yeah. Is that, is that okay? Yeah, <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, I'm okay, so I'll just introduce myself. I'm um, the treasurer of the uh, SIG. Um, I joined fairly recently and I work at Harriet Watt um, doing uh, EAP there and we're in the middle of the pre-sessional um, like everyone else, I think. Um, I think my, my puzzle is certainly related to Stella's. Um, I've kind of, the, the, the puzzle I, I, I identified, the uh, what on, on the slide here is how to get students to interact online in synchronous lessons in a way that was meaningful. Um, so this idea again, like Stella, of getting through things, there were lots of slides, uh, little, student, little student input, um, they were interacting, but their contributions tended to be quite short and infrequent and superficial sometimes. Um, why was, you know, why did I decide to, to try and do something about this? Um, the, the in-sessional course that I was teaching at the time was uh, challenging for students. Um, it was called research preparation and it involved them developing an independent research project. Um, and as, we, as uh, Stella was saying, we, you know, we, we had much less time in class with blended learning. It's just, so the students had to prepare material for the classes in addition to working on their research projects. Um, they struggled, they didn't have time, they often didn't prepare, and this meant that I was talking and talking, <laughs> and they weren't talking. Um, so the approach that I, I took, uh, I'd been reading about legit legit legitimation code theory frameworks, um, semantics and autonomy uh, for cumulative knowledge building and I decided to, to try to use these to, to help me. Semantic density, um, we can see in the graph on the right, um, semantic density here um, is about the, the density of meaning of a term. Um, the, the lesson I've used to, to illustrate in the slide was about developing a conceptual framework for research. Um, so we can see in the second framework that I mentioned that, but just to come back to this, this first one, um, the, the term conceptual framework is, is very full of meaning um, up here, but it, it can be um, unpacked by using less dense words, such as um, something like components that you can measure so you can kind of wave down and unpack that, that quite um, semantically dense term. Um, it's also a term that is weak in gravity because it, it isn't tied to a particular real world, real world context. So it's uh, gravity is, is uh, weak. Um, if we use a real world example to explain conceptual framework, then we move down the curve or, or, or wave as we unpack the term. And in my teaching, I'd always wave down, um, but because I was thinking about this um, uh, semantic framework, I, I, I started to, to try to wave back up again as well. Um, so I made, made much more effort to um, link back to a more um, conceptually, um, kind of up the up this this wave again um, and this meant that both me and in particular the students were using more conceptual language um, so we looked at examples at the bottom of the wave and then we 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 uh, related those back to a more conceptual level so so what they were saying became more um, more interesting more less uh, superficial I suppose the other legitimation code theory um, framework or dimension that I used is in the bottom right of the, of the slide, um, the autonomy framework. And there's an example here from the same lesson on conceptual frameworks. 
Um, autonomy here means how different autonomous knowledge domains are integrated. So I, I thought about the different types of knowledge in my lesson and how I wanted to interweave them so that the students would participate more. And I took out a lot of the preparation that they hadn't done very well. And I ended up with the core lesson knowledge, which here is in green um, about conceptual frameworks. Then there were some uh, metaphors in the red exotic uh, quadrant down here at the bottom left. Um, I showed them images of frameworks in the real world, such as trees and branches and roots. So, um, we looked at uh, photographs of things and the students found meaning in these metaphors for their own research. Um, and the other type of knowledge that became much more of a focus in our quite short lessons was the students' own research projects. So they talked about what they were doing in breakout rooms and then all together and made visual depictions of their research in slides to share with the other students. And they were able to link what they were doing back to the sovereign core green um, lesson content. So to conclude, um, instead of just asking students to, to talk more, um, I managed the content differently so that we, we co-constructed our knowledge and, and spent more time talking uh, about the core lesson content. And the students were more talkative and engaged, but the best thing was that they were able to interact in a way that helped them learn more deeply, I hope, and transfer their new knowledge out of their EAP classroom. Okay, that's it, thank you. Thank you very much, Judith, and thank you to Stella as well. Um, just in the interest of time, I'm thinking that if you've got questions that you'd like to ask either Judith or Stella about their little projects and puzzles that they've uh, been talking about, you might just want to pop a, a question in the chat for them rather than us open up the, the discussion here at this point. Um, so feel free to do that. And just to draw your attention, Stella's also popped the slides from hers into the chat and maybe Judith might want to do the same as well. So what we plan to do now is to get you into breakout rooms and Carol will be doing that shortly um, in order for you to share with each other the kinds of puzzles you've been experiencing, but also more importantly, perhaps the ways in which you've tried to resolve those and the kinds of approaches you've taken to developing your own practice, whether that's been through literature research or practical steps like recording yourself and watching back or asking other colleagues for feedback as we heard Judith and um, Stella describe there. Um, so in order to support your discussion, I think Carol, I will give you a moment to come in here. Carol is going to put a, a document into the chat so that just to give you a kind of a framework for your discussion. Is that right, Carol, is that what's happening? Yep, it's there. It's there. Okay. There's there's three options. You can just go freestyle, talk about what's interesting, or on the worksheet, there are two, let me see if I can find. Um, there are, are two guides. One's a table and one's a set of questions, but it's probably easier if you just open the document because I've got that typical Zoom problem of a million things open on my computer. So can people open the document? Yes, Carol. Great. Okay. Well, where am I looking for to see the document? So it should be in the chat. No, I'm not seeing it. Okay. It might be a bit further up. Yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. scroll up a little bit. It's from Carol and it's called Subtle Scholarship of Teaching and Learning Framework SIG Puzzling July. I don't think we're puzzling okay. July, but we're puzzling in July. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. Da, da, da. You may or may not find that useful. Da, da, da. And I'm just going to open all the rooms now. And it's, oh, good 20, 25 minutes or so for you to talk about what's interesting 
for you. I'll just wait for a minute. You're okay, can you see it flashing up and Agnes? Oh yeah, okay. Slowly, slowly. Hmm. Okay. I'm just going to move some people around. Oh, Stella. Ah. So, Christy, can it can. Agnes, can you get into a room or is your connection going? 